early January on the north coast of Norfolk on a cold, raw, blustery day. We are here partially for the birding, but the other reason is to revisit natural surroundings, a wildflower and discovery centre that we first discovered in May 2016. The garden is open throughout the year, so we thought we'd visit it in mid-winter, in its winter dormant period, before its regeneration, because we knew what it was like in the summer. The comfort and warmth of the wood burning stove added to the overall coziness of natural surroundings Kathy in the woods. So let's go back to the beginning of the story, to the spring of 2016. Early June 2016 and another excursion from our motorhome along the quiet lanes following the wildflower road signs to a nature reserve in the Glaven Valley in North Norfolk. Natural Surroundings Nature Reserve is located on the Bayfield Estate on the banks of the River Glaven, an unspoilt choke stream which flows through the reserve just inland from Blakeney and Clay next to the sea. Now for our surprise. The wildlife friendly gardens are owned and run by Anne and Simon Harrop, the authors of my orchid book, which has been our constant companion on our many excursions throughout the years. Hello and welcome to Natural Surroundings, situated on the Bayfield Estate in North Norfolk. This is a, a wildflower and um, British Wildlife Discovery Centre and we have a particular emphasis on plants. I've been a naturalist since I was a schoolboy and I've been working here together with my wife Anne for about 18 months now and uh, we're really working hard to try and make this a real showpiece for everything to do with British wildlife. I'm really interested in wildlife gardening and encouraging other people to garden with wildlife in mind because I think it's really important for people to take notice of what's around them and having plants in your garden also uh, I think makes people go out and look for them in, in the wild and make a connection with the wild which is uh, what we all need. This eight acres wildlife garden and nature reserve is a peaceful inspiring place for everyone to visit. It encourages visitors to give nature a home in their own gardens with its wildflower meadows, riverside walks and wildlife ponds. Anne Harrop's wonderful plant shop offers a wide range of native wildflowers carefully chosen for wildlife friendly gardens. Oh, this is the first time we've uh, tried to grow them in pots but we were given this by a friend who uh, has them growing in her path and so she didn't want to tread on them and we put some in pots and some down on our chalk bank. The ones on our chalk bank have just come out in flower as well, but they seem to be being eaten slowly by slugs, but so far this one's fine. Okay. What's that yeah, one then? It's a meadow buttercup. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's always a struggle to find sort of indigenous plants, really. That's what yes, you want. Which there's lots here. Yes, lovely. The cafe in the woods sells a wide range of products connected with wildlife gardening. 
and signed copies of Anne and Simon's latest books can be purchased, as well as homemade soups, cakes, sandwiches and freshly brewed coffee and tea. The tea garden is a lovely place just to sit and enjoy nature. Or you can enjoy the food inside, watching the action on the bird feeders. It is a real pleasure to work here. Uh, Simon and Anne have got great ideas for steadily improving this whole place. And to be honest, it doesn't feel like work most of the time. It's uh, just a, like a big adventure. Masses and masses of birds, aren't there? Yeah. And wildflowers. It's just the whole atmosphere of the place is gorgeous. We've seen a really wagtail, lovely. haven't we? And yeah. all the little chaffinches and blue tits, great tits. So yeah, we'll be definitely coming again because it's absolutely beautiful. Would highly recommend it to anybody. We're really working hard to try and make this a real showpiece for everything to do with British wildlife. And having plants in your garden also, I think, makes people go out and look for them in, in the wild and make a connection with the wild, which is uh, what we all need. We couldn't resist this garden, so we are back again the following year to see how it's progressing. One of the main developments over the last year since you, you came in May 2016 is that we've taken on an apprentice, David. Uh, David has been a real uh, asset to natural surroundings. He's a real hard worker, he's very interested, very keen to learn and we've been able to do a lot with his help over the, that period of time. I've started my apprenticeship in uh, environmental conservation and one of my tasks today is raking the meadow which is to try and encourage wildflowers um, to come through and to get rid of the dense vegetation of uh, the sedge that has taken over. But we've already had orchids on here, common spotted orchids have already been seen. Um, I really love working here, every day is different, I'm doing so many different tasks. Uh, not one day to the next is the same, it's brilliant but probably my most favourite is doing the butterfly survey for the butterfly conservation which is a one, we one day a week survey and we get given a route to go along and identify all the butterflies that we can see and it's amazing how many different species are actually here and it's great to sort of know that what you're doing is encouraging the butterflies and I hopefully next year I can do an MVQ level 3 in environmental conservation I've always been interested in wildlife ever since a young age, whether it's birds, butterflies, dragonflies, mammals, all of it just intrigues me. The other thing that we've done is that we've been working very hard on the meadows. We've now got the equipment to cut them efficiently and we've been able to start cutting them in the middle of the summer this year which is just the right time and we're really aiming to reduce the vigour of the existing vegetation which tends to be dominated by just two or three species so that we have a much lower growing plant cover with a much bigger diversity of species. We reduce the nutrients available to the plants and reduce their vigour but that's going really well. First time here, I'm getting lots of ideas for a wildflower garden and uh, I've never done a wildflower garden before so I uh, want to give it a go when we get home after seeing everything here, it's absolutely beautiful. Over in the tea garden, the second generation of brimstone butterflies this year are beginning to show themselves. And over on the Budlier, there are several species of butterflies out taking advantage of the sunny conditions. Um, we're here to try and catch butterflies with these flowers. 
and so far three have landed on my hand which is quite good and two have just by per accident have landed on me and one has landed on my hand We spent most of the time working on the gardens and the grounds. We've extended the herb garden and landscaped an area around that and terraced it in order to be able to plant a bigger variety of herbs and, and demonstrate what people have used over the years. We've extended the, um, the gardens around the bee garden to make it a little seaside garden to display some of our coastal plants and perhaps the most intriguing thing is unfortunately we lost the last of our red squirrels in the autumn so we've used their cage for a completely different purpose in that we've put um, a selection of plants which show the darker side of the botanical world in there poisonous plants insectivorous plants carnivorous plants we've got a nice selection of those growing and people are quite surprised what is poisonous that grows commonly in their gardens because of course things like daffodils and foxglove are uh, deadly if you ate the wrong bit of them in sufficient quantity so that's been a really exciting development for us are you ready We've been coming here for years, about three years. This year we brought a yearly ticket. It's better every time we come and Simon and Anne have done wonders with the place. It's lovely. We feel as though we're winning the battle against the nettles and hogweed that were dominating this site uh, three years ago. And we've still got plans for next year, so we hope everyone will come back and see uh, the exciting uh, new areas that we're going to be putting in this winter. So you'll have to come back again next year in order to see the fruits of our labours on the meadows. We'll leave the last word to Frida Holding, who's celebrating her 92nd birthday today. Do you know there are many, many garden centres and garden places to come to and to go to, and I love all of the flowers. But to come here to see all the wonderful wild flowers, the flowers that we've had in our little gardens and so much beauty and so much real real countryside it's worth a fortune this is like a dear journey into the past and yet hopeful into the future thank you so very very much <laughs>